Aloha and good morning. Thank you for uh, um, coming so early at, uh, I guess it's not too early, but anyway. Um, uh, my name is Sharon Ziegler-Chong, and uh, this session uh, we kind of brought together, John Leong and I um, kind of thought about it over a, a bowl of noodles and, and really wanted to have the time to get uh, people together to talk about some of the issues that the, the speakers and I have been working with and thinking about for a long time, as well as a lot of you. and. Um, uh, Aaron Lowe and I were just talking about how we can logistically do this. My temptation is just to have us in a big circle and talk story. Um, that doesn't necessarily work with the conference schedule. So we'll try to take, make this as interactive as possible. We would really like to have um, interaction from you all as well. Uh, this session is going to talk about um, different programs that exist right now. Um, how we set them up, how we fund them, how we do them, um, the challenges that ha we've run into, um, which uh, and the and the lessons learned from those challenges, um, as well as a discussion, hopefully, with you on uh, where do we go from here. Um, my background is uh, well, no, let's not go into my background. My my what I currently do is just a lot of different um, programs with. Uh, um, internship programs, a whole suite of internship programs, that's what I'll be talking about today, but I'm also the Associate Director of the Pacific Aquaculture and Coastal Resources Center at UH Hilo, and that's my base for a lot of these programs that are both statewide and, um, and region-wide. Um, what we really want, excuse me, what we really want to focus on is how we get even better at what we're doing now. The local participation in our conservation workforce is very important. It should be an important issue for all of us. Hawaii's unique, uh, there are people that are really connected to the place, and uh, conservation, conservation management isn't really about so much about managing resources as it is about people. And if we're not um, working with the whole community with our efforts, as all of you well know, we're not going to be very effective. It, we have a real role. Um, I think some people, when I started different programs about 15 year, years ago, people were like, you know what, the schools do that, the universities do that, we don't really need to connect people into these um, efforts, that's, you know, we got a job to do. But I think if all of us really think um, about how we work, we're more effective when we include people and we mentor others into um, the jobs that we have, because hopefully then they'll start off from where we leave off, such that we actually even get better and we don't keep recreating, recreating whales. I've worked with um, interns over the last 15 years, actually about 20 years of doing training programs. And um, I, I've been, uh, as those of you who know me in the audience, it's a, it's, a, it's a very deep passion about mine of really working with getting more undergraduates into these fields and really mentoring them in. Um, I think Jack Ewell, the former director of the um, Pacific Island, Island, excuse me, Institute for Pacific Islands Forestry, um, uh, likened me to a mother hen, and, um, frequent, and frequently I feel like that at these conferences I, so because I see many interns. Um, but all of us here in the audience have a commitment to that, and we wanted to talk about that with you. Um, I just wanted to make one note. Uh, one was that we're, our, we'll, we'll try to make this as interactive as possible. Secondly, um, our speakers are pretty heavily weighted towards um, high school to undergraduate um, and beyond um, uh, programs. In retrospect, I would, we should have included more community education, K-12 education, etc. Um, it's not that we don't know, think those are important at all, um, it's just we can only have so much in two hours. Um, but we definitely would like uh, to talk about that as well as in the, in the questions and answering, uh, question and questions and answers, um, as well as discussion afterwards. So without further ado, I'm going to um, uh, bring up my first uh, speaker, John Lee Ong. Um, I'm going to ask each of my speakers to self-introduce, so I don't have to do it. 
Good morning, my name is John Leong and I work for a company called Pono Pacific. I, I forgot my badge originally this morning. My wife said, don't worry, they'll still know who you are. And so <laughs> I am John Leong, I got a badge to prove it. Um, but we, we do the Hawaii Youth Conservation Corps program uh, as well as some other environmental work. And I just wanna first thank you folks for coming this morning. I know um, you guys are the early birds uh, and it tells me two things about you guys, this audience. One is that you guys are, you know, you guys are gonna be the forerunners and you're on it because you're the early birds. Second thing is that you guys are concerned about the future of conservation because what we're talking about, like Sharon said, this is so exciting because this is the future of what conservation is. So it shows me a lot of hope for the folks that are in this room. As for the other folks that chose the other sessions and didn't come, I don't know about them, but you guys are <laughs> awesome. So, um, you know, this, uh, as we're talking about this topic, it kind of likens, it made me think about, you know, internships and the next level rising up, kind of likens to um, an analogous to a native forest. And you think about it, um, right now we have a really good canopy, you know, we have, um, you know, the ohias, the coal, mamane trees that are growing, and, and that's really represented by a lot of you folks here that are in conservation already. Um, but the problem is, is that we're, we're lacking the, the understory, you know, the, the, the next trees coming up and the the seedlings coming up out of the ground. And um, we do have some, but proportionate to the population in Hawaii, it's just a few, it's just a handful. And instead we see a lot of invasive species uh, coming up. And so you, know, you can think about your favorite one, or at least here like blackberry or whatever, things like that. But these invasive species are things that are competing for our youth in terms of their interests and their time. Um, you know, they're, they're, if you're a kid growing up in the 90s, they're exposed to over 3,000 ads per day. And you think about all the, logos, the t-shirts, you know, conservation cups, everything that they see, their interests are being applied for. You go to a high school these days, it looks like a walking bulletin boards with their t-shirts say Rusty, Locomotion, all these other things. And then you go, um, you know, they have things that a lot of folks here didn't have to deal with growing up, internet, video games, um, malls, computers, all these things that are applying for their interests. And in addition to that, the youth today, you know, they're looking to live and, you know, they need to get jobs. Here in Hawaii, it's expensive they could get a job in construction that pays more than conservation, you know, they get $50 an hour. And so, you know, we have that challenge of, you know, how do we get these guys involved? And, you know, there are a lot of great youth programs that are coming up, especially K through 12, like Sharon mentioned. But then, you know, you get an interest, how do you get them from there into the field? So we're gonna be looking at those issues today. I'm gonna to talk briefly on that and what we're doing, kind of show some of the successes and then also um, some of the pros and cons to internships that you can look at. So the Hawaii Youth Conservation Corps, our mission is really to provide hands-on learning experiences to aid conservation managers throughout the state, but also really to, to mentor youth, to give them more of an environmental awareness and to provide them um, with a, a pathway to get into this as a career. So I think this slide just says what I just said. Should, okay. So, um, to do so, the pro we have four programs which we offer. Um, we have the summer youth program, which mo many people associate with the YCC, which is our initial program, a second year summer program, a year-round internship program, and an education award community assistance program. So our first program is, it's tied to its roots with the old um, the Teddy Roosevelt CCC Civilian Conservation Corps idea, in that groups are, they're in teams and they work out in the field. Getting, getting youth into the field. Um, the state of Hawaii had their version, started actually in the 70s and 80s under the Department of Interior, which some of you might have been involved in, um, in your youth. And, and then in 1995, DLNR under Mike Wilson started up the, um, the YCC, and that ran until 99. And then in 2001, YCC actually, well, DLNR contracted us to put together a single youth program for, on the island of Kauai for the summer. We've been fortunate and with the support of, of many of you folks out here, it's been able to grow. And we provide um, a six week experience during the summer to high school and college students. Um, they, they work in teams on all the major Hawaiian islands, which are listed up there. Um, and they work one week, they all come to Oahu for a week of training. They each spend a week on Kahoa Lave. And the remaining weeks, they, go on, they work on their island and they work in different ecosystems with different um, agencies. So they get a whole, you know, potpourri, I guess, of, you know, different uh, sites and things like that, and really exposing them to the issues that we're facing here in Hawaii. 
Um, the members that participate, they receive a you know, great experience, first of all, but also a $1,000 stipend and also three uh, college credits from UH Manoa if they choose to. And last year we had about 90 participants, and next year we're looking to about, have about 150 participants statewide. So, you know, we had 90 participants this year, but um, we had um, about 270 people that applied last year for this program. And so, um, well, that is really awesome. It, it's hard because we have a lot of people that want to be involved in it, and we want to give the first-time members that, that experience. But then we had a lot of people that did it and want to redo it, and it's like, where do they go? So, kind of in the idea of kind of creating a career pathway, last year we started up a second-year program, and that's for high school and college students as well. It's for members that are returning, and then they can come back, um, and they actually are at one site for the entire summer. And while they're at that site, they're in groups of one to five, and it gives them more depth. So the first member, first one was like a poo-poo a platter, and then the second summer is gonna be kind of more like a, you know, more of like a um, prime rib or you know, something like that. Um, I like food, so <laughs> I'll make a lot of referrals to food. Um, so they also receive a $1,000 stipend, and we give them a $1,000 education award, which is through our AmeriCorps grant. And um, that gives them funding so that they can go off to college. It's for grad school, for school loans, and other things like that. And they can also get three botany credits as well. Um, so last year, this past year, we had 15 of those positions. And next year, we're looking to have 20 to 30 of those positions next summer. And um, it's really been great because, you know, we've been able to work in partnership a lot with, like, the UHIP program and PIPES program so that these programs are offering these opportunities together. And um, one of the things that we just started up um, to, to really augment, you know, Sharon's program does an awesome job with the HIP program in the college age. And then, you know, so we kind of have them from high school, early college, and then Sharon really takes over on the college side. And then afterwards, where do they go after college? So we now have the year-round internship program, which is to provide entry-level positions. It's a year-long position, either part-time or full-time. We place them at different sites statewide. And um, they work like a, like a member of the staff. And um, they've had them since 2003. They also get paid. It's $12.50 a month. They get health care, um, the, um, child care if they have children, and some other benefits. They also get money for college. At the end of the program, they receive 2400 for part-time members and 4800 for full-time members as an education award. So last year, we had 11 positions. And um, next year, we're looking to have uh, 25 positions. So if you're an interested site, we're going to be looking for, for folks. Um, and then our last program is the Education Award Community Assistance Program. And really, this is um, because we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to aid each other in partnerships in all these programs. And one of the ways we found that we could help is that um, we get these Education Award grants. Um, and so we, it's able to augment or assist different sites that want to develop or create an internship program at their own site. So for members that work 300 hours at a site, we can give them a thousand dollars education award um, to you know support them in their schooling. It's not cash, but it's a voucher. So we've been able to help out different programs um, from Pai Pai Ohia, um, UHIP, and other programs that are interested in just you know boosting up what they're able to offer. And next year we're, we had this year we had 70 of those slots, and next year we're looking to double that with 140 um, statewide. So that's that's our programs in a nutshell. Um, and you know, you might be thinking, "Well, that's great," but what what comes of all these? So, we compiled just a sliver of some of the benefits of internships, and I'm sure other folks will t give you a little bit more fuller picture. But we're going to look today at educational, economic, and 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 also member development benefits. So, educational. I mean, they're working with the best folks that you guys in this room. You know, um, they're getting mentored by folks that they can't get this information in textbooks. You know, and they're doing a whole variety of things that's giving them such great exposure. We also do a pre and post test in our summer program to kind of see, you know, are members learning and what are they learning? So we give them a test in the beginning of the six week program and at the end we give them the same test and we don't give them the answers in between, by the way. Um, well, except for what they learn in, in the program. We found that their scores have increased 136%. And this is really exciting because this is statewide. It's not just the Punahou Iolani kids that are, you know, getting this. But it's, you know, from Moloka'i, Honoka'a, you know, Kauai, 
they're gaining and they're learning all through doing. And it's really neat because it's showing, you know, God's given us all special talents and abilities. And, you know, just because you might not be so good in the classroom doesn't mean that you're, you're not as equivalent um, in life, you know. And, and this has really kind of shown that. And it's given a lot of confidence, which I'll show later on to these youth that, you know, they, they do know much. And we've seen hunters and fishermen show kids that are academically book smart, you know, how to, how to get about in the forest. And that's, that's really encouraging. So that's educational. We also tried to take a sliver of what economically, you know, if you were trying to quantify what are the benefits of an internship program, what would that be? And so we took four areas, and again, this isn't everything, but we took four areas which are volunteer work, um, stipends, you know, like money going out into the community, okay. educational training, and also education awards for college. And we took those four areas and tried to quantify it. So we took our service hours, which are listed there, took volunteer hours, which are hours that our members worked with volunteers over the year, and then we multiply it by $18.04, which is the national um, average for a volunteer hour. That's uh, from the independent sector. And um, we also took the amount of stipends that we pay out into the community, the education awards for college, and then training and development, um, you know, from our, our week-long trainings for the summer programs, the conferences like this. We do a year-round AmeriCorps conference twice a year on Oahu, all those costs. And we added together, and we found that the gross benefit that we're putting into the community every year through all our programs is about $1.8 million. Now you take out the cost from that, and um, it, you, you know, for the cost for the stipends, coordination, educational training, and all that kind of stuff, and the net benefit was $1.2 million. So, you know, if, you, if you're a business person, you, you're getting a return on your investment of, you know, $3 to every dollar that you put in. So, so economically, internships make sense. Um, what about the members? What, are they gaining anything from this? Uh, we showed they get some educational, but also, too, um, yes, they are. We've seen from evaluations at the end of the programs, they're, they're gaining in so many different areas in leadership. This is a scale on 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, the average score from last year. Uh, environmental awareness they're gaining, um, you know, increasing their co confidence levels, making a difference with their life. What I think is even more exciting is that we did, Matt Bauer, uh, sitting over there, did a survey of all the students that have been through YCC since 1995, and um, he found, what are they doing in life now? I mean, is, is it just a one-year thing and that's pow? He found that we had a response rate of 67, which is about 30% of the mailers. 90% of them had gone on to school or finished school since they've finished the program. 91% agreed that this increased their awareness about environment. Two thirds said that this is applicable to their career path. I mean, that's you know, two out of every three kids coming through the program. 57% are now pursuing conservation as their part of their education. So it's one, you know, more than one out of two of them that are going into the program or coming out. And the, you, know, you guys can read the stats, um, but you know, it's preparing them for future job skills. And you know, they have to go through interviews and all these things. And even doing that helps them. Um, you know, the attitudes are increasing. They also are more confident in their abilities. They gain a lot more cultural understanding. 97% said that they increased in that. We take them to lo'is and fish ponds. And so they understand the importance of the host culture here and what it means to be from Hawaii. So those are some of the benefits. So you might be thinking, well, why should you get involved? Really, it's the next generation. I mean, like Sharon mentioned, we're <laughs> passing it on, you know? And so if you're a member or an intern, I just want to quickly address to you folks, a member or a site, you know, what are some of the pros and cons to getting involved? Members, you guys are going to have an amazing time. You guys are going to get to see places that people that live in Hawaii don't get a chance to see every day. You get to work with talented folks, people that are in cutting edge things that are researching all kinds of awesome things that we're learning about this, uh, this week. Um, you know, it's great networking for you. If you want to get a job in conservation, they get to check you out, see how you work, um, which is also a caveat, too, so you should work hard. Um, it's very rewarding, and it's fun, too. Um, challenges is that, you know, they are not high paying. You're not going to become a millionaire doing this. And, um, you know, it's going to require hard work, and you might not get a lot of credit for it. And if you're a year-round intern, you could be working with the same people and getting paid less um, because you're an intern and doing the same things. And if you're not from here, housing is also a challenge, too. Um, for sites, you know, if you're interested in having a site, you know, every month, every quarter, we have this thing called reporting. Thank you. And um, 
I call that paper management sucks because we're always <laughs> doing like time sheets and everything like that, and it comes around annually too. And so, you know, you guys will have to help us with that, but that helps, I mean, these support internships. So, you know, people are gonna make mistakes, you know, you're gonna have to deal with it, you're gonna have to plan uh, schedules and all kinds of things, and it's gonna be hard, but you know, it's part of it. Your staff has to jump up to that level in which they, it's not, this isn't just cheap labor. We want, we're trying to invest in these kids. Um, and you need to have ac adequate facilities. I was just talking with Joby outside, the, you know, having enough trucks and enough things for your, your site to have. But there are a lot of benefits too. You know, anything that takes effort, you, you know, it, it, you're gonna have challenges. You don't go to the gym and drink a Diet Pepsi and expect to get strong. You have to work out a little bit and do something hard. So, you know, same thing here. I mean, there's challenges, but there's a lot of benefits. So, you know, they're great, great help, especially for those of us that don't have millions of dollars in our budget. You get to see potential applicants, and I see so many people outside that have jobs now that were past interns, and it's great to see. Again, it expands the capacity and purpose of your site. You're not just killing invasive species, but you're also passing on something to the next generation. You're providing the min missing link. I mean, you think about it, up till maybe 100, 150 years ago, kids and elders, they were working together, you know, in, in whether it be farming or whatever, um, uh, fish ponds or whatever it might be. Thank you. And um, this is just a chance for, now we're, they're separated, but now, um, and so they're, they're not getting to see the noble things in life, you know, our work ethic, what it takes to restore LA piles, what it takes to restore native forest. And so this is a chance to provide that missing link. And then finally, you know, we all have the same amount of time each day, which is 86,400 seconds. They tick by, and what matters is what we choose to do with each of those seconds, and it really, investing in someone else's lives really makes such a big difference. And you know, just going back to the analogy to end on that seed, if you think about a seed, it's, it's not just a seedling, but that seedling, you know, if it, if it works with other kids, if that person works with other kids and other kids working that, it's just not one seedling, it's the whole forest that's inside that seed, and it's just waiting for you guys to help unlock that potential. So thank you guys very much, and I just want to thank um, some folks and uh, God who makes this possible, our staff, um, Jolie Wanger, Randy Kennedy, who really support the program, uh, Kamehameha Schools, AmeriCorps, UH, and, um, and our partners as well. Thank you very much. Have a great day.